Here we go. I'm Professor Joshua. This is Learn to Reason. Welcome to the first class in what's going to be a long, elaborate series showing you the ins and outs of this beautiful digital audio workstation that we call Reason by Propeller Heads. So let's get started. Without further ado, here we go. This is the main screen of Reason. And here, where the cursor is, you can see the plus symbol and where it says Add Track. You can click that and you can start creating an instrument. You can pick a drum, you can pick a piano, you can pick a synthesizer, whatever you feel you need to begin with, whatever your idea is. If you have a rhythm, pick a percussion, pick a drum instrument. If you got a melody, pick a bass, pick a piano, start laying it out, a guitar, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter how you start this creative process. It just matters that you begin it and you get into it and then you can work it out from there. So, I'm just going to wing this. This is just going to be a very simple beat. Uh, we're just going to make something extremely uh, basic just to show you the, um, just to introduce you to some of these concepts. And by the way, this is, this is, uh, can be applied to any DAW, not just Reason. Uh, there's a lot of DAWs out there. There's Pro Tools, there's Fruity Loops, Ableton Live, yada, yada, yada. I happen to uh, prefer Reason. I've been using Reason for um, about 13 years, so <laughs> it's what I'm used to. Uh, and it wasn't always a fully-fledged DAW. You couldn't record audio directly into it until about Reason uh, version 6 or 7. So I used to have to use multiple uh, programs um, to make it a complete song uh, with vocals and everything and live instruments. Now you can do it all in Reason. It's been like that for a while, and it's great. So here we go. Let's get started. Let's start with the drum beat. So we're going to pick the most basic Reason device. So you see here that uh, I have a list of devices. The Reason device folder are the ones that are packaged in with your Reason program. Some of these other ones are rack extensions and VST plugins that are made by third-party um, companies. Uh, and I will definitely be making videos specifically for each individual device, the Reason devices, the VSTs, the rack extensions going forward. Uh, but just to start out, we're going to keep things basic. I'm going to do a re-drum drum computer. Okay. So I have a MIDI keyboard. It's an Akai MPK-49. Um, I have pads. I have 49 keys. Uh, my first key, my C note on my keyboard, C0, um, I mean, pertaining to the octave, is going to be a kick drum every time and what's an easy and so down here we're just gonna do a four on the four floor four on the floor beat which is a basic disco beat it's a four four time signature which is the most common one you'll find in music uh, especially pop music and it's four beats those four quarter notes um, so one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two. And it's called four on the floor because what I'm going to do is put the kick drum on each of those quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So first, first thing you want to do is set a tempo, okay? A speed of the track that you want. Right now, we're just going to keep it on 120, okay? So if I enable the click track here, the metronome, some people call it, and then hit record, Big red button right there. You can hear the click going to the time signature and going to the tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the one gets that louder click, just to let you know. Now, it didn't loop right there. If you notice, this is my sequencer down here, and I can hit F7 to make it full screen. Um, it's, it, by default, it's going to put the loops your, your start of the loop, this L right here, you can click that little flag, you can move that around. <laughs> Usually it's, a, it's always at the start of the track, obviously. And the right, the R, uh, the, the end of the loop is usually uh, after the eighth bar right there. So this is bar one, bar two, three, four, and so on. And you can see the quarter notes, or the little dashes in here. Okay? So there's two ways we can lay down this four on the floor kick drum track. Uh, we can just Go hit F6 and go back to our rack screen. This is our rack with all our devices. 
like a, in real life, if you really were in a studio and you had a rack with hardware on it, <laughs> the, these things would be stacked up there just like you see here represented. This is another reason that I like Reason. As far as I know, there's not another program that really emulates this in such an uh, official way. You can either play the drum track on your keyboard, or you can just program it. Here's the drum machine, the redrum. Uh, if I hit run right here, you're going to see this red uh, dot going across the squares. Each square is a 16th note. Okay, so you get 16. So if I just, if I just lay kick drums all over it, you're just going to hear it constantly going each 16th note at 120 beats per minute, which is our tempo right now, and 4, 4, time signature. So if you want four on the floor, you're going to want a kick drum at each quarter note, which is going to be the one of each of these right here. So one, the five, the nine, the thirteen. These are little groups of four. So there you have a, this is it. It's that simple. This is the four on the floor kick drum. Okay, so as you can uh, hear, the click track is... It perfectly in sync with the four on the floor kick drum track that we just put down. Now, it's not actually in the sequencer yet. As you can see, there's nothing here. You can see the track uh, of the redrum, the instrument, the actual instrument. Let me run this back. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have a loop enabled. So right here, these arrows here, right to the right of your recording button, is the loop on and off button. Click that, put it back. So, you can see the instrument track. You can see, you can hear that it's playing, but you don't see the actual MIDI notes on the sequencer because it's still in the drum machine. What you have to do, let's stop that, uh, is right click on the machine and hit copy pattern to track. So right here, it, you know, this four on the floor uh, pattern is right here. Now we can extend it because right now it's only 16 steps. We can make it 32, we can make it 48, we can make it 64. Um, and, but let's just keep it at 16. And you're going to see what happens when I copy it. So copy pattern to track. Let's go back to the sequencer. Now it's there. Here's the clip. Now you can see um, it just filled it out. The entire loop area is now filled out. Now we have a new problem. It's playing a double because we have to disable the drum machine from playing it on top of the sequencer. So these little buttons right here, enable pattern selection, disable that. And this uh, pattern button, you can disable that too. And you'll see that the run button is completely disabled. I can't even click it back on. It's, it's not letting me. So now it's just playing the source from the sequencer. We could take the click track off now too because it's the same thing, it's the same rhythm. Okay, so this is the most, this is as basic as it gets. I've, th this is the default kick drum in Reason. We've done nothing to it. We haven't changed the sound of it. We haven't mixed anything. But you have to start somewhere. So this is a good beginning. Uh, now, we need some type of a melody. So let's go to a bass. And uh, we can either add device here on the rack. You see that there? We can also, as I showed earlier, we can do it on the sequencer. Um, or we could just go here on the browser. Here's the browser screen, pane, sorry, on the left. Um, and you can, let me stop that, otherwise it's going to get way too redundant. Uh, and let's find a good instrument. Here's the instruments. Instruments, effects, utilities, players, instruments. Um, and we can use, let's use the first thing that, that looks like we can make a baseline out of. And it's the Europa Shapeshifting Synthesizer. So we're going to click and drag. Drop it right there um, on the left side of the sequencer. So here's the main part of the sequencer. This left side of the sequencer is where you're going to see all your instruments stacked up. Um, so now we can we should be able to start playing it. Not a bass sound. <laughs> That's more like a pad. Uh, yeah, just your C major chord. Um, so if you click this little folder icon, that will let you browse a patch, and you can pick different sounds. So here's the, the sounds that come with this 
instrument in Reason. This is all packaged in with Reason. Um, and right now it's under, you can see the folder up, up the top here of the browser. This is the folder within the instrument. So these are all patches for the Europa. But uh, right now we're in the folder that says poly, which is poly uh, synths. We want to change that. Go back to the main Europa folder. Do that by clicking this. And then you'll see base at the top. These are all the bass patches. So this is what we want. We want a bass. So we can just pick bass guitar. Sounds simple enough. Now you can hear it. It's not in sync. I didn't play it perfectly, but the, my latency is just not that great. So, and I wouldn't recommend doing this, usually. But just for the purposes of the latency, I'm going to hit F8. I'm going to select the clip of all the notes I just did. Hit F8, and I'm going to quantize. So quantize is something that, it's a bit of a crutch, so it's going to force it to exactly hit uh, on time. Hit apply. You'll see it. That it's adjusted the notes. But even the adjustment's not perfect, so you have to go in and move the notes around. Some of those offbeat uh, notes don't sound too bad. But then that wouldn't be so simple if we start doing offbeat rhythms. So we're just going to keep it on beat. Yeah, there's, there's the note right there. You can see almost there. So, you know, just the most basic music thing. I was just doing an A and a C, you know, usually just the A note. A, 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 there's a C. And at the very end, an E. What does A, C, E give you as far as a chord? A minor. So let's throw in an A minor piano chord. And uh, we're gonna use the Reason device, Radical Piano. Throw in a C major there to start with the right? Again, the latency uh, because I'm streaming is right now is is very <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so latency is what happens when you're recording something and you know you're pressing it on the keyboard, but it's late when it's reaches when it goes through the processing. It becomes late when you lay it down on the on your software. So it's something you always have to compensate for. Usually, just in everyday recording situations, but as far as streaming. With a DAW right now, while making a track, the latency is is ten times worse. <laughs> so I, like I said, I do not like to quantize. I would not recommend quantizing, but just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to do it. I want everything to hit on the one. That first, that first. That should be good. Should be good. 
It's a very boring track so far, but... But, you know, e e now, these tutorials are going to be mostly for beginners. You know, people that are just getting started with ADAW. Just getting started making their own tracks or, or producing songs. Um, but this is I want this also to be for advanced users. Uh, sophisticated musicians. Uh, people with some mu music uh, theory knowledge. Um, but they may have never used Reason before. Now you can hear me better over the track. And it's gonna be getting better. It's gonna get better. Because once we lay down the basics of this, then we can start fine-tuning things. Then we can start adding flourishes. Then we can start getting in the nitty-gritty of music making uh, on Reason. And just in general. Because these concepts can be applied to any other program. So we have eight bars, looping. Sounds okay. Now what happens if we slow the tempo down? Let's drag it down. We'll click and we'll drag. Let's make it like a 95. Right? Sounds too slow. So let's bump it up. Let's go past 120. That's where we started. We started at 120. Let's make it 140. Keep going up a little bit. Sounded a little bit more, you know, groovy. It sounded like something. It's starting to get a little bit better. It still needs a little, uh, maybe a pad. Let's try a pad. So a, a synth pad is something that's gonna really fill out the those empty spaces of your track. Now it can be overdone. <laughs> empty spaces are good in music, um, but it's good to throw in a good pad some of the time. So let's pick uh, something simple. How about a Maelstrom? This is one of the early synths that came packaged with Reason. It's been around a long time. Uh, we can pick a pad. Let's pick Coals of Fire. And let's remember what notes we've been playing. A, C, and E. Okay, A minor. I think we snuck in a G there too because we did a C major, yeah. Um, so, you know, that's... okay. So sometimes pads can be displayed with one note. That's just the A note. Use the mod wheel. Use the pitch wheel. I'm not recording. I'm just... Uh, you don't want to record everything you do. <laughs> you want to preview things first. You don't want to just keep wasting uh, recording time. Um, so... That's all the A minor notes together. So we're just going to play that on the one. Let's give it a little click. One, two, three, four. You can do the mod wheel. Make sure that it's starting on the one. By the way, spacebar um, stops and plays the, the song. So you can hear the mod, the mod wheel action in there. Now if I double click the clip, you can see uh, the notes. This is your note pane. You can see the keyboard on the left, piano roll, uh, right below that. Uh, it's your velocity window. So as you can see, this is just one long chord. So it only has one little velocity setting over here on the one. That's where the note started. Um, and the velocity is the pressure. It's how hard you're pressing on the keys. Uh, another example of 
making things too mechanical. If you quantize everything and if you had everything be the same velocity and everything sounded just perfect, you know, you would lose that human element, which you don't want in music. You want the human element in your music. Unless you're making, you know, even chip tunes, even chip tunes have human elements in them. Um, and they're not just completely mechanical. Um, you need dynamics. You need expression. Expressive uh, things and tonalities happening in the music to, for it to be engaging. So here's the mod, mod wheels um, curve here. You can see how I move the wheel. So right here, this dot, I start moving the wheel up. Up, 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 up. And it gets to the top. And then it starts plateauing at the top here. And then I start dropping it down at the very end. So this could all be adjusted. This could all be adjusted. I can drag. I can remove some of these dots. I can I can drag them around. You know, say I, I didn't want it to be plateauing that long. Start dropping it down there. Early on. Okay, so let's go. Let's go hit F F five on the keyboard as a shortcut uh, to getting the to the mixer. So this is like an SSL mixer. It's emulating an SSL console, which is that classic huge mixing console you see in really big studios. Um, this is basically a virtual version of that. Uh, so each of these channels, these strips here. You can see the, the, the divided by lines going down. So, you know, this this right here, I, I can hit the solo button. So you can see this is the kick drum. This is the bass guitar. It's all labeled. And by the way, you can relabel these. So if I double click bass guitar, I can label it, you know, just bass. <laughs> all caps, because I like to do that. Um, there's the piano. You can see it. And here's the pad. Now, it's the whole strip is that sound. So up and down, you gotta scroll all the way up. And you can also grab this window. You can click and drag with a left click on this box right here on the right side. That's a, f you can, yeah, that's another way to do it. You gotta either, you either use the mouse wheel or just click and drag that window up. Um, now, the one on the right side, that's your master channel. So this is, you see your master volume, your master output volume. Right now it's just that pad playing. Um, you can see I something peaked and went over the, the zero decibel limit. And that's why there's these red bars there. And I can click reset and reset that. So watch out for that. You never want your music to hit those red blocks. <laughs> so if you see that, you're going to have to turn some things down. Or everything down one of those two um, so each channel here has a whole wealth of settings this mixer is amazing I love it uh, you have routing up here signal path your gain of course you usually don't ever want to mess with the gain on the input just leave that at zero uh, dynamics you have compression ratio threshold release um, this is how you turn it on you have a gate so you want to add a noise gate because there's too much noise in your recording. You can enable that right here. Uh, you have an EQ, which uh, I have another monitor here. I'm going to drag this down. So I have a second monitor in my setup, and I always keep this. It's called the Spectrum Analyzer on my second monitor. So I can always see uh, visually what's going on with my sounds. So this is the equalizer for this pad. You can see as it's playing live. Um, you can see the frequencies. So you can see it's mostly in the mid-range. There's not a lot in the low range. There's not a lot in the high range. It's mostly right there in the middle. It's starting to peak, you know, at 320 hertz. Right around here. Yeah, let's put that back up. Uh, so that's this is the button to, to see that. Show in Spectrum EQ window. Um, then you have EQ settings here. But you can do it right from the Spectrum Analyzer. So if I run that back here, hit EQ on, I can actually adjust these. These are, are this is an equalizer. So I can cut some of those mids, <laughs> or boost them, or whatever you want to do. We're not going to do that right now. Um, so I'm going to bring that back up there, and below that, 
you can you have uh, inserts. So if you want to add some uh, effects to this channel, they would go in there. Um, and then you have sends, which are these master effects over here. Now, Reason by default has some reverb effects, some delay echo effects here. So if you click these numbers, it's going to apply that. So if I hit three, it's this echo effect. So three, echo. Take that off. I can add this delay, three sixteenth delay. Um, I can add the reverbs. I can bump them up really high. <laughs> we don't need that much reverb. Uh, let me take off the solo. Let's go back to the whole track. And let's mix it. So something is peaking here. And peaking is what we say when the audio is going to get distorted because it's too loud. Um, so what I like to do in this situation is just left click the first track, first channel. Hold down shift and left click the last channel. It's going to select everything. Now I can take these faders, which are going to control the, it's going to control the volume. Turn that down a little bit until it doesn't peak anymore. By the way, also, when you're mixing, listening to things at a lower volume and not always blasting it sky high every time and, and annoying the neighbors uh, when you're monitoring your tracks, it is better to listen to it quieter because things stand out more and it's not all loud. So if it's quiet, everything is a little bit quieter, you can start hearing really what is louder or what's not loud enough uh, in your mixing. So right now, just have to take a minute to just listen to it. Sounds like I could bump up my piano a little bit. The bass is okay. I can hear the bass. I can hear the pad. The kick drum could be up a little bit, so I'm gonna turn that up a tiny bit. Okay. Pretty good. All right, so that's just the first lesson uh, for Learn to Reason. Again, I'm Professor Joshua. I'm going to be making a whole series of tutorial videos on how to use Propeller Heads Reason, um, as well as some other tips and tricks for your music productions. If you like this content and appreciate it, please consider going to my Patreon page with the link in the description box and consider a donation. That will help, uh, help me flourish, keep this channel alive, and generate more compelling content for you. Also for my patrons, I will have exclusive content on the Patreon page. Thank you, goodbye, until next time. Happy music making, goodbye.